If we are given a quadratic, y equals x squared minus 4x minus 5, remember that that is standard form. And that tells us some things about our equation. One of the things it tells us is that the coefficient in front of x squared is 1, which means it's positive, which tells us it opens up. And if it opens up, it's going to have a minimum. Depending on how far we've gone, it might tell us a little bit more, or we're going to calculate certain things based on it. The other thing it tells us in standard form is that the constant, negative 5 in the C position, is our y-intercept. y equals negative 5. So I'm going to remember that for when I put it on the graph. If I need to factor it, again, I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 5 and add to negative 4. And those are going to be negative 5 and positive 1. Because this is a simple trinomial, meaning that the coefficient is 1, those numbers go right into brackets. So a factored form, I have x minus 5 and x plus 1. Remember that that is factored form. And from factored form, we can determine the x-intercepts. So when y is 0, we need to know how we can make the left side equal the right side. But to do that, we either need this bracket to be 0, so 0 times a number is equal to 0, or we need this bracket to equal 0, so 0 times whatever number that is, is equal to 0. So from that, we have the math to support it, that 0 equals x minus 5, x equals 5, as one x-intercept, and from this, the math to support it from that bracket, 0 equals x plus 1, so x equals negative 1 is my other x-intercepts. So from factored form, I can remember my x-intercepts are x equals 5 and x equals negative 1. This is the math to support it. If you can recognize right from factored form, that's the whole point. Remember that our x-intercepts are sometimes called our roots or our solutions. So I'm going to take this information and I'm going to plot it on the grid. So I know that one of my x-intercepts is 5, and one of my x-intercepts is negative 1. I also know that my y-intercept is negative 5. I now need to find my vertex. To find my vertex, I want to find the axis of symmetry. From the axis of symmetry, again, it's going to be halfway between any two points that are at the same height. So if I have the two points, negative 1 and 5, my x-intercepts, I need to know what's the middle. And we've used the word before, midpoint, what's the middle of the x-intercepts. So to find the middle of the x-intercepts, I might actually use part of my midpoint formula. So the middle, or the axis of symmetry, is going to be my two x-intercepts added together, 5 plus negative 1, all divided by 2, because I want to know what's in the middle. 5 plus negative 1 is just 5 take away 1, which is 4 divided by 2 is 2. So my axis of symmetry is an equation, x equals 2. That means that when x is 2, 
that is my right there axis of symmetry. So somewhere along this line is where the vertex is. Judging by this pattern, it's probably down here and then comes back up. To now know the height, I need to sub x is worth 2 into either factored form that I found or standard form the original. Either should work. But I am looking for my vertex and I know that x is 2 and now I want to know what is y. So if I take my factored form from above, y equals x minus 5, x plus 1, and I sub in when x is 2, what is y actually worth? And then I do the math. 2 minus 5 is negative 3. 2 plus 1 is 3. Negative 3 times 3. Y equals negative 9. So my vertex is 2, negative 9. 2, negative 9. Because of that, I now have enough points to draw my parabola. But I can find a fifth point if this y-intercept is 2 to the left of the axis of symmetry. The point at that same height, negative 5, will be 2 to the right. Because of that, I can now sketch my parabola. Again, a curved V that continues to open up, arrows on the end to show that it continues. Well, this is a thing of beauty right here. And I've got my parabola. Now it still follows everything that I noticed. It opens up. So I have a y-intercept of 5, x-intercept of negative 1 and positive 5. I found my vertex. I have a minimum. I can now talk about my minimum. I have a minimum of negative 9. That's the height. They're the lowest it goes. I can also talk about... If it goes from left to right, left to right, it is decreasing when x is less than 2. And then it is increasing when x is greater than 2. So the slope, the instantaneous slope at any point is negative. When x is 2, the slope is 0. And then the slope is increasing, or a positive slope. So I've used my x-intercepts. Let's do one more example together, and then you have a turn. Given 2x squared minus 4x minus 6, determine the y-intercept and x-intercepts, plot them on the grid. Got a y-intercept of negative 6. I need to factor that to find my x-intercept. Now I'll notice that there's a common factor. They are all divisible by 2. So when I take that out, 2x squared divided by 2, x squared, negative 4x divided by 2, negative 2x, negative 6 divided by 2, negative 3. Now dealing with a simple trinomial. So I need two numbers that multiply to negative 3 and add to negative 2. Those numbers are negative 3 and positive 1. So the numbers that multiply to negative 3 and add to negative 2 are negative 3 and positive 1. From that, I know my x-intercepts. From that bracket, x is negative 1. I'm going to plot it. And from that bracket, x is 3, positive 3. I'm going to plot it. And now I need to find my axis of symmetry. So I'm going to add negative 1 plus 3, all divided by 2. That's 2 divided by 2 is 1. So again, for my vertex, I've got 1 and I've got something. There's my axis of symmetry. x equals 1. 
I now take x is equal to 1, and I sub it into factored form or standard form to get what y is, and we'll have our answer. If I sub it into standard form, that is fine. I look at my order of operations. 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4 minus 6. I can add all together. 2 take away 4 take away 6 is negative 8. I see that the matching point to my y-intercept, one away from the axis of symmetry, there. Now I have enough to draw my parabola. If I took my x value and subbed it into factored form, I would get the exact same thing. Just to show you, it doesn't matter which form I sub it in, x plus 1, so 1 plus 1, and 1 take away 3. So there's my x value subbed into factored form. I need one answer in each bracket, so 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 take away 3 is negative 2. 2 times 2 is 4, times negative 2, 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Same answer, so once again, whether I sub it into my original standard form or my factored form, I get the same answer, same result, and I can still plot. Opens up, my A value is positive, no matter what form I look at. It opens up, it has a minimum, this has a minimum of negative 8. Minimum negative 8 occurs at the axis of symmetry of x equals 1.